Carpenter Bees, Large and Small, by me, John Kehoe. In this short video, I'll introduce two very different kinds of carpenter bees found here in the San Francisco Bay Area of California. The large carpenter bees are Xylocopa species. This one is over one inch long. While the small carpenter bees are genus Ceratina species, this one's only about one quarter of an inch long. Taxonomists have laid out the hierarchical order of living organisms, and this shows how these bees are related. Our large carpenter bees are all genus Xylocopa species. They are part of the tribe Xylocopini. Our small carpenter bees are all genus Ceratina species under the tribe Ceratinini. These two tribes fall within the subfamily Xylocopinae. That falls within the family Apidae, which is the largest family of bees. So the large carpenter bees are readily seen and heard, especially in late winter to early spring. Here we see a female valley carpenter bee browsing on western redbud. Note her extended tongue and mouth parts as she moves into the nectary. While she grabs a hold of the blossom keel, the stamens and anthers pop out and dab her ventral surface. She can get both pollen and nectar in one stop. I've added a slide at the end of this presentation that identifies the bees and plants as reasonably close as possible. Here's the male valley carpenter bee browsing on milkweeds, narrowleaf milkweeds. Both the males and females of this species are the same size and are among the largest bees in North America. This is a close-up of another male valley carpenter bee seeking nectar on milkweeds. His weight causes the blossoms to lean over. Look closely and you can see he's got gooey pollen clumps stuck onto his feet and leg hairs. Here we see a female foothill carpenter bee. She's approaching a globe gilia. She's about three quarters of an inch long. The globe gilia pollen is seen on her hairy hind legs, while the white pollen that's dabbed onto her at the back of her thorax is from a different flower. Some flowers have a structure that dabs bees with pollen as they visit for nectar. These bees then cross-pollinate simply by visiting one blossom of the same kind to the next. Here we see the male uh, foothill carpenter bee. He's browsing for nectar on elegant clarkia, and as he does so, the sticky pollen clings to his legs and sparse abdominal hairs, which means the males can also cross-pollinate these blossoms. He's going for nectar, but the sticky pollen moves from one flower to the next. Because we see both males and female uh, carpenter bees on these elegant clarkias, we might see a mating attempt. And this one failed. I guess the female wasn't interested. This is also a foothill carpenter bee female. She's browsing for pollen on evening primrose. This photo was taken in very low light because these primroses open after hours. And she is on this flower to get that sticky pollen. These primroses and the clarkias seen in the previous slides are in the same plant family, both of which produce very sticky, clingy pollen. Now we move on to the tiny carpenter bees. This is a, probably a male Ceratina species. He's on a ribes leaf. We can see he's got that unusual toothed femur feature on his hind legs there. The females of this species don't have those toothed femurs. Here's another Ceratina species on a ribes leaf. This is obviously a red flowered ribes uh, current and we can't really tell from this picture whether that's a male or a female. This is the female. 
uh, this is the same Ribes. She is uh, apparently going in for nectar, and we can see her pollen collecting hairs on that right hind leg. These bees are only about one quarter of an inch long. This is an unknown species, a Serotina, and the fingernail helps gives you an idea of scale. It's on some kind of a dandelion type uh, flower. And in the same photo shoot, another Serotina species. The angle of the camera leads us to believe that the wings are shorter than they really are. Note the kind of brassy green shiny coloring of this Serotina. This is clearly a female Serotina. She's browsing inside a California poppy. We can see the pollen collected on her hind legs, clinging to those pollen collecting hairs. Poppies don't provide a nectar reward, which means that the bees that we see foraging in them are almost always females. A lucky photo. On the left, we see a sweat bee, Helictidae family member. They are typically between three quarters and a half inch long, while on the right in the center is the Serotina carpenter bee with that really glossy coat. And on the right end, we see an unknown bug on the ray petal, a uh, ray flower of this aster. These, uh, it's interesting that these three critters are browsing or looking for nectar or pollen on the same flower without taking any notice of each other. Here's that list of flowers and bees as near as I could get with a slide number if you want to rewind and take notes. Thanks for watching. Here's a little more information about me.